And welcome back. It's time for this week's Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, uh, the legislature has passed and Governor Fallon is likely to sign a measure expanding charter school possibilities. So let's start with that one. Well, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, charter schools in Oklahoma were not created until 1999, which is a few decades after they'd begun in some of the other states. And it's interesting that since then, They've been restricted, limited to the state's two biggest cities ever since the creation date. Oklahoma City and Tulsa were the only ones that could organize charter schools. I think it's past time that that's been changed. It has been changed uh, thanks to Senator Clark Jolly and State Representative Lee Denny, who worked long and hard on this. I applaud their leadership. I also applaud the leadership of the state uh, Charter Schools Association, the Public School Resource Center, and public school options. And these are all groups you don't hear as much about maybe, but maybe you should hear more mm -hmm. uh, than we hear about groups like the OEA. Um, the, there was some opposition to this, but uh, they worked real hard, the groups I've mentioned, to organize support, and I applaud everyone involved because I think this is gonna be a lot of help to take the same dynamism outside of our cities uh, that we've had in the two urban centers in uh, making schools better for kids. Now, the Senate uh, seems poised to take up uh, another effort at prison reform in this coming week. What are the prospects for that? They're pretty good. There's actually a couple of things that have been uh, percolating. One is working on recidivism, and that's coming from uh, Speaker Hickman. Uh, the bill I'm particularly interested in and that I'm hopeful about uh, would address the 85% rule. I'll explain that in a second. Oklahoma is number one in female incarceration, a number f in the top five somewhere uh, every year for incarceration of men. The cost for imprisonment uh, and for putting people in prison for nonviolent crimes uh, is simply spiraling out of control. Unfortunately, the Oklahoma District Attorneys Association or council uh, has uh, come out against this. This is despite the fact the legislation was adjusted a couple times to address some of their concerns. So I hope they lose. I hope yeah. that Representative Pam Peterson and the majority of the Republican caucus joins the um, Democrats in the legislature to enact this measure, uh, addressing the 85% rule, which make 85% mean 85%. Right. It gives an incentive to those incarcerated to behave while they're on the inside and learn useful skills as it is now the way it's been implemented in the past, 85% means people serve 95% of their sentence, a little bit more, a little bit less before they're eligible for parole. All right, we'll be watching that. Now, I know you deeply admired Representative David Dank, as did I. He died a week ago, was buried this past week. A couple words about him. Well, he was one of nature's noble men. Uh, this is a loss of leadership for the state in a variety of areas that we've discussed in past segments. He was a leader for the concerns of children and of seniors, those at the dawn of life and those at the sunset of life, as the late Hubert Humphrey would have said. There's sadness in the parting, but joy in the knowledge for a believer like me that he's with God and with the love of his life, Odelia, the former representative. So, so long, David. Thanks. You can read more about these and other topics at CapitalBeatOK.com. For Pat McGuigan and Alex Cameron, have a good day.